So it's our time now. Ivana wakati wetu sasa. Let's welcome our today's uh, speaker. Na tumkaribishe mnanaji wetu leo. Yeah, he is our own here. Ni wa kwetu kabisa hapa. Uh, Pastor Dr. Charles Sokile. Mchungaji Dr. Charles Sokile. Yeah, welcome sir. Karibu sana mheshimiwa. Amen. Thank you so very much Pastor Eliud. Uh, Asante sana mchungaji Eliud and for the wonderful student portfolio that you are pushing. Kwa ajili ya agenda maalum nzuri ya wanafunzi. We are very intentional about young leaders at the City Christian Center. Tunayo dhamira ya dhati juu ya vijana na viongozi wa Kikristo hapa CCC. And we thank God a lot of great things are happening among young people. Na tumshukuru Mungu kwa sababu mambo mengi yanaendelea miongoni mwa vijana. Yesterday we had a session on a master class on intergenerational wealth and family businesses. Na jana tulikuwa na mafunzo kuhusiana na kuwa na utajiri kati ya vizazi na vizazi and young people signed up and came up with very powerful strategies how they want to take the businesses from their parents to next level na vijana walitengeneza mkakati namna ambavyo wanataka wachukue ule utajiri au biashara kutoka kwa wazazi hadi kwa vizazi vijavyo but you know we also have a Timothy school of leadership where there is structured leadership for young people lakini vile vile tunayo eh, shule maalum ya mafunzo inaitwa ya Timotheo hapa kanisani kwa ajili ya uongozi kwa vijana and we also have a speakers forum to train them to be able to speak in public na pamoja na hayo tuna ukumbi au baraza ambalo tunawafundisha vijana na wengine kwa ajili ya kuzungumza mbele ya kadamnasi So giant killers is more of a culmination or a climax of all that God is doing at the church around the year. Kwa hiyo mpango huu wa giant killers au wale wauaji wa mambo yasiyowezekana ni mpango ambao unakwenda kuhitimisha yote yale ambayo tunayafanya kwa mwaka mzima. So please make sure you belong to these programs. They are so powerful and they are so useful. Kwa hiyo hakikisha ya kwamba umejiandikisha na kuhudhuria mafunzo haya kwa sababu ni yenye nguvu na yana msaada mkubwa. In the midweek we have series of teachings very powerful about apologetics. Katikati ya Juma tuna mafundisho yenye nguvu sana ya kutusaidia juu ya kuitetea imani. I had grace to catch up this Wednesday and it was so powerful. Na mimi nilipata neema ya kuhudhuria Jumatano ilikuwa ni mafundisho mazuri yenye nguvu. We had a test of homiletics, exegesis, apologetics and all those great and good things. Na kuna misamiati mingi ya maneno ya taaluma na mitaala au utaala wa kibiblia and how to stand and speak for the faith that we subscribe in pardon how to stand and speak for the faith that we subscribe in na jinsi ya kusimama na kuipigania imani tunayoiamini na kuisimamia so the series continue this wednesday with pastor eliud if you can on wednesday please Kwayo, don't miss ukiweza usikose jumatano hii tunaendelea na mfululizo wa mafundisho ya kuitetea imani so we continue with our series on leadership development kwa hiyo sasa twaendelea na mfululizo wetu wa mafundisho au mafunzo kuhusu eh, maendeleo ya uongozi And as you can remember our theme this year is integrity of art and skillfulness of hands. Kama ambavyo mnaweza kukumbuka ya kwamba ujumbe wetu au mada yetu katika mwaka huu ni ule uadilifu wa moyo na umahiri wa mikono yetu. We are learning from David from Psalms 78 and verse 72. Twajifunza kutoka kwa mfalme Daudi kutoka Zaburi ya 78 na mstari wa 72. For the past six months we've been dealing more with the integrity of the heart. Kwa majumu eh, kwa miezi takriban sita iliyopita tumekuwa tukishughulikia juu ya eh, uadilifu wa moyo. And now we are moving slowly towards the second part which is of the leadership skills. Na sasa polepole twaendekea katika ule umahiri katika au utaalamu katika uongozi. Our senior pastor Dr. Lucas has been talking about this. Na mchungaji wetu kiongozi Dr. Lucas Salua amekuwa akizungumzia haya. And this morning I want to talk about the battles of a leader. 
na asubuhi ya leo nataka tuzungumzie juu ya vita au mapambano yanayomkabili kiongozi how can a leader be skillful to fight and to triumph through different battles that faces him na kiongozi anawezaje kuwa na ule umahiri kuwa na ujuzi wa kupambana katika vita mbalimbali vinavyomkabili whenever you become a leader be sure there's going to be a lot of battles on your way wakati wowote uwapo kiongozi uwe ufahamu fika ya kwamba kutakuwepo na vita nyingi njiani and sometimes these battles can actually lock you out of leadership na wakati mwingine vita hivyo vinaweza vikakuondoa katika uongozi you have heard about people who were appointed for the post but they never took those responsibilities na umewahi kusikia watu wameteuliwa kushika nafasi fulani lakini hawakuchukua na, uh, nafasi hizo you have heard about people who rose and came down again na umewahi kusikia juu ya watu ambao walinuka wakapanda juu na baadaye wakashuka chini you also know many people who started very well as great leaders but they ended so terribly na vile vile umewahi kusikia au kufahamu juu ya watu walikuwa viongozi wakuu wakaishia mahali pabaya so leadership battles are really very real kwa hiyo vita katika uongozi ni kitu halisi let us read the bible in the book of first chronicles Ebu, chapter 18 tusome biblia katika kitabu cha nyakati wa kwanza sura ya 18 verse 1 to verse 14 msari wa kwanza mpaka wa 14 My interpreter will read and I will read Psalms 144 verse 1 and 2. First Chronicles 18:1 to 14. Mambo ya nyakati wa kwanza sura ya 18 mstari wa kwanza hadi wa 14. Ikawa baadaye Daudi akawapiga Wafilisti, akawashinda, akautoa gathi na vijiji vyake mikononi mwa Wafilisti akapiga Moab na hao wa Moabi wakawa watumwa wa Daudi wakaleta zawadi tena Daudi akampiga Hadadezeri mfalme wa Soba mpaka Hamathi alipokwenda kujisimamishia mamlaka yake kwenye mto wa Frati Daudi akampokonya magari elfu na wapanda farasi saba elfu na askari waendao kwa miguu ishirini elfu Daudi akawakata mishipa farasi wote wa magari ila wa magari ila wa magari mia akawaweka na washami wa Dameski walipokuja wamsaidie Hadadezeri mfalme wa Soba Daudi akapiga katika hao washami watu ishirini na mbili elfu ndipo Daudi akaweka ngome katika shamu ya Dameski nao washami wakawa watumwa wa Daudi wakaleta zawadi Naye Bwana akampa Daudi kushinda kila alikokwenda. Tena Daudi akazitoa ngao za dhahabu zilizovaliwa na watumishi wa Dadezeri akazileta Yerusalemu. Tena toka Tibathi na toka Berothai miji ya Dadezeri Daudi akatoa shaba nyingi mno aliyoifanyizia Suleman ile bahari ya shaba na zile nguzo na vile vyombo vya shaba hata aliposikia tou mfalme wa Hamathi ya kuwa Daudi amewapiga jeshi lote la Dadezeri mfalme wa Soba wa Soba akampeleka mwanawe Hadoram kwa mfalme Daudi ili kumsalimia na kumbarikia kwa sababu alikuwa amepigana na Hadadezeri na kumpiga kwa maana Hadadezeri alikuwa amepigana vita juu ya tou naye akaleta vyombo vya dhahabu na fedha na shaba vya namna zote hivi pia mfalme Daudi akavifanya wakfu kwa Bwana pamoja na hiyo fedha na dhahabu aliyoteka nyara kwa mataifa yote kwa Edom na kwa Moab na kwa wana wa Amon na kwa Wafilisti na kwa Amaleki tena Abishai mwana wa Seruya akawapiga wa Edom katika bonde la chumvi watu kumi na nane elfu akaweka ngome katika Edomu na Edomu wote wakawa watumwa wa Daudi naye Bwana akampa Daudi kushinda kila alikokwenda basi Daudi akatawala juu ya Israeli wote akawafanyia hukumu na haki watu wote watu wake wote yeah. amen thank you so very much So in this chapter there are a list of many wars that David fought. 
Katika sura hii twaelezwa juu ya orodha ndefu ya vita ambavyo Daudi alivipiga. In fact this is just a summary of the great wars that he fought. Na hii ni muktasari tu wa vita kuu ambayo Daudi aliipigana. Small battles are not counted in here. Na vile vita vidogo vidogo havikuhesabiwa hapa. But the word says the Lord gave David victory everywhere he went. Neno la Mungu linasema da, Mungu alimpa Daudi ushindi kote alikokwenda. So victory came from God and it was God who gave David victory. Kwa hiyo ushindi ulitokana na Mungu na ni Mungu aliyempa Daudi kushinda. And David knew it that it was God who gave him victory. Na Daudi mwenyewe alitambua ya kwamba ni Mungu ndiye aliyempa ushindi. Although he was killed and he used his skills he knew that God was responsible for the victories. Ijapokuwa alikuwa na utaalamu alikuwa magi lakini katika ushindi wote huu anajua ni ulikuwa ni nyuma ni kazi ya Mungu mwenyewe In many of his war like psalms David is talking about how God gave him victory in battles Katika zaburi nyingi zinazozungumzia vita Daudi anaelezea jinsi ambavyo Mungu alimpigania na kumshindia In Psalms 144 verse 1 and 2 Katika zaburi 144 mstari wa kwanza na wa pili David says Daudi anasema Praise be the Lord my rock Libarikiwe jina la Mungu wangu mwamba wangu Who trains my hands for war Ambaye huifundisha mikono au huiandaa mikono yangu kwa ajili ya vita And my fingers for battles Na vidole vyangu kwa ajili ya mapambano He is my loving God in my fortress Maana yeye ni Mungu anayependaye tena ni ngome yangu My stronghold and deliverer Yeye ndiye kimbilio langu na mkombozi wangu My shield Yeye ndiye ngao yangu In whom I take refuge amae najificha kwake who subdues people under me yeye huaweka watu chini yangu so you see david is praising god for all his war equipments and all his war artilleries kwa hiyo tuona daudi akimsifu mungu kwa ajili ya silaha zote alizokuwa nazo na zana zote za kivita he knows his shield and fortress is of the lord anajua ya kwamba ngome yake na nguvu yake ni yatokana na mungu and is refuge is coming from the lord na kimbilio lake latokana na mungu and then even when he wins in the battles it is actually god who delivers people under him na ingawa yeye ameshinda vita lakini kimsingi ni mungu mwenyewe anayewaleta watu mkononi mwake but verse 1 of psalms 144 is very profound na mstari ule wa kwanza wa sura hiyo 144 unazungumza kwa sauti yenye nguvu david is talking about ability of being trained na Daudi anazungumzia uwezo wa kufundishika and he is saying that it is God who trains him to fight these battles na anasema ni Mungu ndiye anayemfundisha ili kupigana vita hizo now listen to me carefully hebu nisikize kwa makini God is fighting the battles Mungu ndiye anayepigana vita hivyo but he is training David's hand and fingers to fight the battles lakini anaifundisha mikono na vidole vya Daudi ku piambana katika vita hizo and both god and david knows that david has to fight with his hands and fingers wote hawa mungu pamoja na daudi anajua kwamba daudi lazima apigane kwa kutumia mikono au vidole vyake it is god who gives us grace to lead when we become leaders ni mungu anayetupa neema ya kuishi tuwapo viongozi but eventually god does that by training us with different capabilities and skills to be able to lead lakini mungu ufanya hivyo kwa kutufunza katika manyanja mbali mbali ili tuweze kuongoza. If you miss out those skills you are in no way going to triumph in the battles. Na ukikosa kupata study hizo au magiri huo hakuna jinsi utakavyoshinda vita. So David is saying God is training his hands for war. Kwa hiyo Daudi anasema kwamba Mungu anaifundisha mikono yake kwa ajili ya vita and his fingers for battles. Na vita vyake kwa ajili ya mapambano. Now if you stretch your hand like this na ikiwa utaunyosha mkono wako kama hivi. All of this is called an arm. Na huu unaitwa tunasema mkono and it has fingers and the hands na mkono una mikono na vidole so david is saying na Daudi anasema God is training his fingers for battles. Daudi eh, eh, Daudi anasema Mungu anavifundisha vidole vyake kwa ajili ya vita. 
A war is made of many small won battles. Na vita kimsingi inajumuisha mapambano madogo madogo. You win one battle and another battle and another battle and eventually you win the all war. Unashinda mpambano mmoja hapa mpambano mwingine pale na pale hatimaye ni umeshinda vita nzima. And similarly a hand is made of many small fingers. Kwa hiyo mkono umeundwa na vidole kadhaa vidogo vidogo. So David knows that the there is an importance of god training him in how to go in the battles Wayo, and win daudi anajua vile ilivyo muhimu kwa kufunzwa katika vita mbele yake one of the challenges that christian leaders normally have moja ya changamoto walizonazo viongozi wa kikristo is when they think anointing can substitute ability for training kwa pale wanapodhani kwamba upako unaweza kuwa mbadala wa uwezo wa kufundishwa. When anointing comes it gives us supernatural ability to be able to lead with wisdom from God. Na upako unapokuja unatupa uwezo ule wa kimungu kuwa kuwezeshwa na Mungu. But those abilities are built on the fundamental principles of leadership. Lakini uh, uwezo huo unaoana na kanuni za msingi za uongozi. When the Holy Spirit comes it reminds us of all the truth Roho mtakatifu ajapo hutukumbusha juu ya kweli yote. The truth about leadership. Ukweli juu ya uongozi. So if you don't know any truth about leadership, ikiwa wewe hujui lolote kwa habari ya kweli za uongozi. You don't have any evidence. Una ushahidi wa wote. You don't have any theory. Una uh, 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 what is theory? Whatever it is you don't have any ability and understanding una ufahamu wote na uelewa when the holy spirit comes roho mtakatifu anapokuja he will remind you of nothing hata kukumbusha chochote and you remember many of us sometimes you think and you think and you fail to think what you are thinking about na wakati mwingine unafikiri unafikiri na unafikiri unafikiria nini because the thinking is normally taken from the part of what has been stored before kwa sababu kule kufikiri kwako huchukuliwa kutokana na kile ambacho kimehifadhiwa awali so david it takes god as his trainer in battle kwa hiyo Daudi anamuona Mungu kuwa ndiye mwalimu wake katika vita. God gives him ability to be able to know what he's supposed to do as a leader. Na Mungu anampa uwezo wa kujua afanyeje kama kiongozi. If you read through this David quotes, na kama ukisoma maneno haya ya Daudi, he will see how he was using several techniques in several different wars. Na utaona kwamba alikuwa anatumia mbinu tofauti tofauti katika vita tofauti. And how he was organizing his military people in different ways to be able to fight the wars. Jinsi alivyowapanga watu wake askari wake katika kushinda vita mbalimbali. In fact the Bible says he started with only 600 people who were useless. Na Biblia inasema kwamba Daudi alianza na watu 600 ambao walikuwa si lolote si chochote. By the time he was starting not great people went to him. By the time he was starting great people did not follow him. Na wakati akianza Daudi katika hali ya chini sio wale watu wakuu waliomfuata. If you look at David's generals, na ukiangalia wale makamanda wa wa, wa Daudi, you look at Ushai and Abishai and all those people, ukiwaangalia kama Ushai na Abishai na wenzao, the Bible says they were sons of Zeruiah. Na wana, Biblia inaeleza kwamba hawa walikuwa ni wana wa Zeruiah. They were born of a David sister, walizaliwa kutokana na dada yake Daudi who was not even married ambaye hakuwa hata katika ndoa so they were raised like boys who had no father na kwa hiyo walikuzwa kama vijana au wavulana wasipasipo baba yao so by the time david started his launch out na wakati ulipofika daudi alipoanza mashambulizi yake they were part of the people who were not noble who went and followed david na hawa walikuwa ni sehemu ya watu ambao hawakufahamika walioandamana na daudi but as you read in chronicles 32 onwards na unaposoma katika nyakati eh, sura ya 32 na kuendelea you see how David has been able to turn these people into great military generals. Na waweza kuona jinsi ambavyo Daudi aliwabadilisha hao watu wakao mashujaa askari wa vita. So David knew the power and the ability of training to be able to win his wars. Kwa hiyo Daudi alijua nguvu na uwezo wa mafunzo ili waweze kushinda vita. In Psalms 18 verse 33, katika Zaburi ya 18 mstari wa 
33 David is saying how God is training his feet like a feet of a deer Daudi anaeleza kwamba vile Mungu anavyomfundisha miguu yake kama ile miguu ya ayala. And if you know a deer it is a very sharp and a very quick animal. Kama ukimfahamu huyu mnyama ayala au paa ni mnyama ambaye ni mwepesi na anafanya kwa haraka. Deer stays at the top of the mountains. Huyo huyo ayala au paa hukaa juu ya kilima. And it can jump from one top side to one top side. Anaweza akaruka kutoka kilima kimoja hadi kingine. And that way it becomes so difficult for predators to attack the deer. Na kwa namna hiyo inafanya vigumu kwa wale wanyama wakali kumshambulia paa. And later you see among David's military generals. Na baadaye twaona miongoni mwa majemadari wa Daudi. One of the skills it trained them was how to run quickly as a deer. Moja ya ustadi aliyowafundisha ni namna ya kwenda kasi kama ilivyo kwa ayala. You remember one time the hosts of the enemy had camped in a well. Na kumbuka wakati fulani majeshi ya adui yalizingira mahali walikuwa katika kisima. And then David said I wish I could get water from the well of Jacob. Na Daudi akasema natamani kupata maji ya kunywa kutoka katika kisima cha da, cha Yakobo. And two military generals broke and went and took water in that well and came back without being hurt by the enemies. Na maskari wake wawili mashujaa wakaweza kupenya ngome ya adui na kuchukua maji kuchota maji na kumletea Daudi apate kunywa. So David learned from God how to be able to become a leader. Daudi alijifunza kutoka kwa Mungu namna ya kuweza kuwa kiongozi. Leadership is very important in wars and in all aspect of life. Uongozi ni wa muhimu sana katika vita na katika nyanja nyingine zote za maisha. And it starts with small battles which eventually makes up the total war. Na uongozi huanzia katika kuwa na vita zile ndogo ndogo hatimaye kuwa na vita kubwa. In fact when you read a Bible na ukisoma hii Biblia you see God is defining himself as the Lord of war na, than even God of peace. Na unaona ya kwamba Mungu anajieleza kwamba ni Mungu wa vita na ni Bwana wa amani. In Exodus 15 God says is a God of war, is a man of war. Katika kutoka 15 Mungu anasema yeye ni Bwana wa vita, Mungu wa vita. In Psalms 24 verse 7 to 9 Zaburi ya 24 mstari wa 7 hadi wa 9 David is praising God for being a man of war and for being the Lord of the battle. Mungu eh, Daudi anamtukuza Mungu kuwa ni bwana wa vita na mtu wa vita. So God himself like to fight wars. Kwa hiyo Mungu mwenyewe apenda kupigana vita. So when you as a leader you go through difficulties and through challenges and Uyo, through wewe, opposition. Wewe kama kiongozi unapitia changamoto, mambo magumu na upinzani. Get know that the The war is at the doorstep. Fahamu kabisa vita iko karibu. Whenever you take a position of responsibility. Wakati wote utakapotoa nafasi ya majukumu. If, if it is in a classroom of 40 students. Hata kama wewe ni kiranja wa darasa la wanafunzi 40. Immediately the war comes at your doorstep. Papo hapo ujue vita iko ukingoni. You will hear some people saying ah utasikia watu wengine wanaguna he ah. is not qualifying for this post ah huyu mtu hakustahili nafasi hiyo he is not doing it well kwanza afanye vizuri you start seeing some challenges and oppositions kwa hiyo waanza kuona changamoto na upinzani when they appoint you as a leader of uh, security activities in the neighborhood wanapokuteua kama wewe ni kiongozi unayesimamia usalama katika maeneo it does not take time before opposition comes haitachukua muda mrefu kabla ya upinzani kuanza kujitokeza so see there is some shakings and pushings about what you are doing as a leader wakati wote unapoona ya kwamba kuna mtikisiko na juu ya yale unayoyafanya kama kiongozi open your eyes and know that the door the, the wall is at the doorstep fungua macho yako ufahamu ya kwamba vita iko jirani the enemy likes to fight leaders na adui apenda kupigana vita dhidi ya viongozi and the reasons are so obvious na sababu ni dhahiri because as a leader you are so exposed up there kwa sababu kama kiongozi basi uko wazi kwa mashambulizi jesus said kwa hiyo yesu alisema i will smite the shepherd nitampiga mchungaji and the sheep will be all scattered na kondoo watatawanyika the 
strategy of the devil is always to target a leader. Mkakati wa shetani au adui wakati wote ni kumlenga kiongozi. That is why in the families na ndio maana miongoni mwa familia when the leader starts having problems na kiongozi anapoanza kukutana matatizo when the father backslides wakati baba anaporudi nyuma when the father gets nyumba ndogo wakati baba anapopata concubine oh he starts going this side and the other side in the way what against the work of the word of the of the lord au anapoanza kukengeuka kinyume na neno la mungu the whole family suffers familia nzima inapata matatizo because the enemy tend to target the leaders kwa sababu adui hulenga kiongozi so whenever you are in the position of leadership kwa hiyo wakati wote unapokuwa kiongozi be it in the family iwe ni katika familia be it in the business au katika biashara be it in commerce and trade au katika mambo ya biashara na mauzo na manunuzi or in any other social event au katika nyanja yoyote ya kijamii know that you are the target of the enemy fahamu ya kwamba wewe ni mlengwa wa adui and one of the skills you need na katika zile eh, umahiri unaohitaji is how to fight your battles as a leader ni namna ya kupigana vita zako kama kiongozi to win battles as a leader ili uweze kushinda vita kama kiongozi you must at least have several important skills lazima uwe na ujuzi au utaalamu kadhaa you must be competent lazima uwe na uwezo you must be skilled lazima uwe na umahiri you must have security and be secure in yourself lazima ujiamini you must be confident and considerate lazima uwe mtu wa kuangalia mambo ya watu it is your competency that will give you ability to fight targeting wars maana umahiri wako na uzoefu wako utakuwezesha kupambana vita and for you to keep the competence you must keep practicing and practicing again na ili uendeleze ujuzi wako lazima urejee kufanya mazoezi na kujizoeza tena na tena so as a leader you must also develop yourself na hiyo kama kiongozi lazima ujiendeleze you must talk to other leaders lazima uongee na viongozi wengine learn from them ujifunze kwao share your challenges na waeleze changamoto zako you must zako. read good books lazima usome vitabu vizuri attend good seminars na uhudhurie seminar nzuri sit down and learn in good programs keti na ujifunze programu zilizo njema one of the folly that people normally make na moja ya makosa ambayo viongozi hufanya they think that the moment someone becomes a leader is all of a sudden becomes capable Wanadhani kwamba punde unapokuwa kiongozi basi una uwezo wa kila kitu. So when we vote and elect a member of parliament to me, to, to, today, kwa hiyo wakati tumeanza kumepambana na kumteua mtu au kumchagua mtu kuwa mbunge, and when it becomes an honorable tomorrow, na when he becomes an honorable tomorrow na anapopata hiyo nafasi na kuwa mheshimiwa kesho he is the same man who was there yesterday na tumesahau kwamba huyu ni mtu yule yule aliyekuwa hivyo jana moving from his home to the office of power does not add any ability na kuhamia kuhama kutoka nyumbani mwake na kuingia katika ofisi ya cheo fulani haileti uwezo wowote when you are appointed a church elder or a leader of the youth group unapoteuliwa kuwa kiongozi mzee wa kanisa au kiongozi wa vijana the title of being a chairman or secretary does not add any ability in you na hilo jina uh, ucheo hicho hakiongezi uwezo wowote juu yako you are still the same person who was yesterday and today wewe ni yeye yule uliyekuwa hivyo jana na ndivyo ulivyo leo so if you don't take deliberate steps to develop yourself in skills kwa hiyo kama uchukue hatua za makusudi kujiendeleza katika kujifunza na taaluma and you don't build the competencies of that requirement na hujengi vile vinavyohitajika ili uweze kuwa mahiri you will remain the same person utabaki kuwa vile vile ulivyokuwa skills are very important in leadership kwa hiyo kujifunza na ustadi ni muhimu sana katika uongozi you need to know how to make decisions unahitaji kujua namna ya kukata shauri kufanya how maamuzi how are simple decisions made there and then maamuzi yale mepesi yanafanyikaje wakati huu na wakati ule how are the complex made decisions made by consulting people je yale maamuzi magumu changamani yanafanyikaje kwa kushauriana na wengine and how are the ugly decisions made by buying time and seeking more wisdom na maamuzi yale mabaya ambayo unatakiwa kuyafanya unafanyaje kwa kuyakawiza ili upate uamuzi you must be tactful in your approaches lazima uwe na ubunifu katika namna unavyoenenda when you look at david kwa hiyo ukimtazama daudi how he was able to navigate his 
life jinsi ambavyo aliweza kuenenda katika maisha yake starting from the time he was with Saul akianzia wakati ule alipokuwa na huyu Sauli and later when he was a band of 600 people in the plains na baadaye wakati alipotelekezwa akiwa na watu 600 and later when he was in Jerusalem na baadaye akiwa katika Yerusalemu you see a very skillful man kwa hiyo waona mtu aliyekuwa na umahiri na ustadi so This morning we are subui I want to talk about three sets of skills that are important for leadership. Nataka ni tuzungumzie juu ya ustadi tatu ambazo ni za muhimu sana kwa uongozi. Three must win leadership battles using these skills. Na ni hizo tatu za kushinda vita kwa kutumia ustadi huo. Number one, ya kwanza, skills about self development ustadi kwa habari ya kujiendeleza binafsi number two, ya pili skills about people ustadi kwa habari ya kusimamia watu and number three, la tatu skills about the enemy of the devil ustadi wa kumtambua adui au shetani now let's start with number one. hebu tuanze na lile la kwanza When we read in the book of Samuel chapter 16 verse 13 tunaposoma katika kitabu cha Samuel sura ya 13 mstari wa 16 the bible says Samuel took horn and went to anoint David at Rama na Biblia inatuambia kwamba Samuel akachukua pembe ili amtie mafuta Daudi kule Rama. So when he went to Rama he anointed David with oil. Alipokwenda Rama akamtia mafuta Daudi. And the Bible says the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Na Biblia inasema kwamba roho wa Mungu alishuka kwa nguvu juu ya Daudi. And from that day David was anointed a king. Na tangu siku hiyo Daudi alitawazwa au alipokuwa mafuta kuwa mfalme. But you will see very shortly lakini utaona hivi punde that although david was anointed a king on that day ya kuwa ingawa daudi alipako mafuta siku ile it took him 15 good years to be really a king ili mchukua miaka 15 kufika katika nafasi halisi why did it take all that long time for david to realize his kingship kwa nini ilichukua muda mrefu kiasi hicho Daudi kuwa mfalme hasa? It is because of the challenges that are facing a leader as a self being. Ni kwa sababu ya changamoto zinazomkabili kiongozi kama mtu binafsi. You may be appointed or you may have skills requisite for a leadership capacity. Unaweza ukateuliwa ukawa na study ustadi kwa zinazofaa kwa ajili ya uongozi. But sometimes you may not really assume those responsibilities and get into what you are supposed to do. Lakini wakati mwingine unaweza moja kwa moja usichukue madaraka au nafasi hizo kwa kile unachotakiwa kufanya. Many years ago miaka mingi iliyopita God blessed me and I bought a house at um, Kijitonyama. Mungu alinibariki nikanunua nyumba kule eneo la Kijitonyama. Now as we were buying a house as you know the real estate market in Dar es Salaam is very complex and very informal and difficult. Na kama unavyojua unaponunua nyumba hapa Dar es Salaam masuala ya umanunuzi na mauzo ya nyumba yaliyo magumu na yamepinda pinda sana. Taking a title deed may take you 10 years even more if you are not careful. Kupata hati ya umiliki inaweza ikakuchukua miaka kumi hata zaidi kama wewe si makini and even having a property ownership right in a rightful name may take you several months na vile vile ili uweze kubadilisha jina ya, ya umiliki inaweza ikachukua miezi kadhaa so the gentleman the middleman who helped me buy that house told me kwa hiyo yule dalali aliyenisaidia kununua nyumba hiyo aliniambia brother mpendwa in this block katika eneo hili people buy houses watu wananunua nyumba but they never own them lakini hawazimiliki so you can buy a house wewe waweza kununua but nyumba but you will may not own it lakini unaweza usimiliki so bishop be quick kwa hiyo uwe makini fanya kwa haraka get it what everything it take and make sure you get in the house hakikisha unafanya kila liweza zalo ili unaitwa nyumba hiyo here at the city christian center kwa hiyo hapa hapa city christian center we have gone through the pains of the real estate na tumepitia maumivu ya madalali hao wanahusiana na mauzo ya nyumba I mean through the pains of the real estate market in Tanzania. Ma, maumivu yale yanohusiana na mauzo na manunuzi ya viwanja na nyumba. We know what it means to buy a property and never own it. Tunajua maana yake nini kununua eh, nyumba lakini usimiliki. It is not that easy. 
si kitu rahisi. So it took David 15 good years to step in the office he was anointed for. Kwa hiyo ilimchukua Daudi miaka 15 kabla ya kuingia katika ofisi ambayo tayari alipaka mafuta. It is my prayer this morning. Ni maombi yangu asubuhi ya leo. That it shall not take you any longer. Kwamba usikawie muda mrefu. To get into your rightful occupancy. Kupata ile haki yako ya umiliki. Some of you have been due for promotion for so many years. Baadhi yenu mlikuwa mnasubiri kupandishwa cheo kwa miaka mingi. But you've not been promoted. Lakini hujapandishwa cheo. Some of you have been promoted. Baadhi yenu mmepandishwa cheo. But you've not been paid according to that promotion. Lakini hamjalipwa mshahara kulingana na cheo hicho. Some of you have something really belonging to you. Na baadhi yenu mna kitu ambacho kweli ni mali yako. But you have not enjoyed the benefits associated with that ownership. Lakini hujafurahia umiliki au faida zitokaza zitokaza nazo na umiliki. We don't want to spend 15 years to go into our rightful destination. Hatutataka tutumie miaka mingine 15 kabla ya kupata haki yetu. So which way now? Kwa hiyo sasa tuendeje? God help us. Mungu tusaidie. Fighting self. Na kupambana na nafsi yako and directing self na kuielekeza nafsi yako and making sure that the self is obeying the will of god na kuhakikisha kwamba nafsi yako inatii makusudi au mapenzi ya Mungu is very fundamental in leadership battles ni jambo la msingi katika vita au mapambano ya kiroho there are four small ongozi. things i want to point quickly here kwa hiyo kuna mambo machache ambayo nataka ni yaseme hapa the first thing in self is convictions and discipline na la kwanza kabisa ni ule ushuhuda wa ndani na nidhamu. So as a leader, kwa hiyo kama kiongozi, you must have your own self convictions. Ni lazima uwe na ule ushuhuda wa imani ya ndani. You must be convinced that I am indeed a leader here. Lazima ujielewe ya kwamba mimi ni kiongozi hapa. And this responsibility is rightfully belonging to me. Na jukumu hili nimepewa na ni haki yangu. You must take up your responsibility. Kwa hiyo ni lazima utwae jukumu lako. If you don't take up your responsibility there will be a vacuum patakuwepo na ombwe and nobody will give you your right in the silver platter na hakuna mtu atakayekupa haki yako bila kuipigania so you must have disciplines to listen kwa hiyo lazima uwe na nidhamu ya kusikiliza discipline to take orders nidhamu ya kufuata ma- maelekezo discipline to respect others na maele- nidhamu ya kuwaheshimu wengine and discipline to obey laws na he- nidhamu ya kutii sheria au kanuni but you must also be uh, be tough enough to walk according to what is rightfully yours na ni lazima uwe mtu shujaa wa kut- enda katika yale ambayo yanakustahili If something is wrong you say this is not right Kama jambo haliko sawa sema hilo sio sawa And that will help you Na hiyo itakusaidia Praise the Lord Bwana Yesu asifiwe You know we Christians Wajua sisi wa Kristo We were taught that if someone slaps you Tulifundishwa kwamba mtu akikupiga kibao turn another cheek Hebu mgeuzie upande wa pili But the Lord ended there Na Bwana haikuishia hapo The Lord ended there Bwana alimalizia hapo tu He didn't say if he box you now na hakusema kwamba akikupiga ngumi sasa now if someone slaps you na kama mtu akikupiga kibao yes what the philosophy of forgiveness and of christian etiquette and grace ni, is to be able to be humble enough ni kweli kwamba falsafa nzima na imani ya kikristo ili uweze kuenenda katika mazingira hayo ni kunyenyekea but jesus was not in any way meaning that christians are stupid fellows to be slapped left right center every day everywhere every time lakini bwana hakumaanisha kwamba kama wakristo ni watu fulani wa ovyo ovyo wa puuzi wa kupigwa pigwa huku na pigwa huku na kule kila mahali so, mahali na kila mahali honestly if someone slaps me in a daladala kwa hiyo kama niko katika daladala mtu akanipiga kibao I will not slap him back. Mimi sitarudishia kibao. But I'll hold him responsible. Hai. Lakini lazima nimwajibishe. Are hey, you dugu. okay? Eh hey, wewe uko vizuri? Why did you slap me? Ni kwa nini wewe nipiga kibao? Because kibao. Jesus did not say if someone slaps you, kwa sababu Yesu hakusema mtu akikupiga kibao, don't ask him why. Usimuulize kwa nini? I will ask him yes. Nitamuuliza ndio. And I will take whatever I take for me to be able to have my rightful responsibility at the moment. Na nitafanya kila niwezalo ili niweze kupata haki yangu katika wakati huo The second thing is commitment and sacrifice Jambo la pili ni kujifungamana na kujifungamanisha na 
kujidhabihu so leadership is very costly kwa hiyo uongozi ni jambo la gharama you must be committed and be able to pay the sacrifices associated with it lazima uwe mtu aliyejitoa na uwe tayari kulipa gharama au dhabihu whenever you are given a position of responsibility wakati wote upewapo nafasi ya majukumu the bible says see it as from the lord biblia inatuambia kwamba tuipokee kwamba imetoka kwa mungu colossians 3 verse 23 says wakolo, Whatever you do do it as for the Lord. Lolote mfanyalo mlifanye kama kwa Bwana. Knowing that the Lord shall reward you mkijua ya kwamba bwana ndiye atakayewalipa so do it with your whole heart kwa hiyo fanya kwa moyo wako wote there is sacrifice which is associated with leadership kuna kujidhabihu ambapo kuna usika na uongozi maybe you need to put in more time pengine unahitaji kutenga muda zaidi maybe you need to think more na pengine unahitaji kufikiri zaidi maybe you need to do other things beyond how other people does unahitaji kufanya mambo zaidi ya wale watu wengine wote you are the leader of the business the business owner maybe you need to if alia before everybody else na kama wewe ndiye mmiliki wa biashara unapaswa kufika katika biashara yako mapema kabla ya mwingine yeyote maybe you are the leader there you need to be the last to leave pengine wewe ni kiongozi mahali fulani wewe unahitaji kuwa wa mwisho kuondoka so be able to take the sacrifice kwa hiyo uwe tayari kujidhabihu be committed uwe mtu aliyejitoa one day siku moja i was telling them in the french church last week na uh, juma iliyopita nilikuwa nikiwaeleza pale kanisa la kifaransa pig invited chicken for breakfast nguruwe alimwalika kuku kwa ajili ya kifungwa kinywa so they had their breakfast kwa hiyo wakapata kifungwa kinywa and they enjoyed their time together na wakafurahia ule muda wa pamoja and the pig said na nguruwe akasema come tomorrow we have breakfast again anasema hebu njoo kesho tupate tena kifungwa kinywa so the next day they went for breakfast na siku iliyopata kwa ajili ya staftahi and this morning chicken donated a, an egg for the breakfast na asubuhi iliyofuatia huyu kuku akajitolea kutoa yai kwa ajili ya ile chai ya asubuhi so they ate the egg kwa hiyo wakalila yai hilo on the third day they said oh it's good Let's Let's meet again. Na siku nyingine wakasema kwamba haya na tukutane hii ilikuwa vizuri tukutane tena. So the chicken donated another egg for breakfast. Kwa hiyo kuku akajitolea yai lingine kwa ajili ya hiyo eh, mlo wa asubuhi. And so it was on the third day and fourth day. Na ikaendelea hivyo siku ya nne na eh, siku ya tatu na ya nne. On the fifth day, kwa hiyo siku ya tano, the chicken told the pig. Na yule kuku akamwambia friend, mbibu, rafiki, we are tired of eggs. Unajua tumechoka kula Let mayai. Let us eat sausage now. Sasa hebu tu So please donate a sausage for us. Tafadhali hebu tutoa jitolee sausage kwa ajili yetu. And then the pig said, alafu nguruwe akajibu. For you, kwako wewe, an egg is a contribution. Na unajua kwako yai ni mchango wako. For me, lakini kwangu mimi, a sausage is a sacrifice. Nikitoa hiyo sausage ujue nimekufa. So we are not saying that we should die in leadership. We are not saying that we should die in leading people. Atusemi kwamba tufe tu kwa sababu ya uongozi. There has to be some proportionalities in what we do as leaders. Lazima kuwepo na uiano fulani katika yale tunayoyafanya kama viongozi. But there is also another problem of complacency. Lakini vile vile kuna kuwepo na tatizo lingine la uzembe. Many people get opportunities to lead. Watu wengi hupata fursa za kuongoza. But then they become complacent all over the night. Lakini wanakuwa zembe usiku wote they don't do their job hawafanyi wajibu wao they become absentee leaders wanakuwa viongozi ambao hawaonekani or they want other people to do it for them au wanataka watu wengine wafanye kwa niaba yao one of the problems we have moja ya shida tulionayo especially in christian leadership na hasa katika uongozi wa kikristo is absentee leadership na ni viongozi ambao hawapo people who are happy to be there ambao watu ambao wanafurahi kuwepo but they are not really to take responsibility and to show up and do something lakini hawako tayari kuchukua majukumu na kuwepo kufanya kitu complacency is a big problem in leadership kwa hiyo uzembe ni jambo tatizo kubwa katika uongozi because if you don't stand firm kwa sababu kama hutasimama thabiti you can fall utaanguka Corinthians 1:10 verse 2 Wa Korintho wa kwanza sura ya ya, ya, ya kumi, msari wa pili It is important for leaders to be consistent ni, vi, ni muhimu sana viongozi kuwa na uendelevu and to continue leading as David did na kuendelea kuongoza kama alivyofanya Daudi Now as I finish with David's story napohitimisha juu ya simulizi ya Daudi David was anointed in 1 Samuel 16 verse 13 
um, Daudi alitoa mafuta katika Samueli wa kwanza sura ya 16 na mstari wa 13. But he, could, he did not he was not able to take up responsibilities of leadership. Lakini hakutoa lile jukumu la kuwa kiongozi moja kwa moja. Although everyone in Israel knew that David is the rightful king, ingawaje kila mtu katika Israeli alitambua kwamba Daudi ndiye mfalme stahiki, Saul did not allow him to be a leader. Sauli hakuruhusu nafasi ya Daudi kuwa kiongozi. So later we see David being anointed two more times. Na baadaye tunaona Daudi akipakwa mafuta mara zingine mbili. So in 2 Samuel 2:4 Katika Samueli wa pili sura ya pili na mstari wa 4 The Bible says that the men of Judah went to Hebron and anointed David over the tribe of Judah. Watu wa Hebron walienda kumpaka mafuta eh, Daudi juu ya kabila la Yuda. This is when Saul was dead now. Na hapa ni wakati ule Sauli sasa alikuwa marehemu. Many years has passed since he was told and anointed will be a king. Miaka mingi ikapita tangu alipoambiwa kwamba ametiwa mafuta kuwa mfalme. Later is reanointed again to be a king. Na hapo baadaye anapaka mafuta tena kuwa mfalme. But only for one tribe. Na hii ilikuwa ni kwa ajili ya kabila moja tu. And then it took yet another many years. Alafu pia ikachukua miaka mingine mingi. And is anointed a third time. Akapao kwa mafuta kwa mara ya tatu. In 2 Samuel chapter 5. Katika Samueli wa pili sura ya tano. The Bible says all tribes of Israel went to Hebron and said to David. Na Biblia inasema ya kwamba makabila yote ya Israeli yakaenda kwa Hebron na kumwambia Daudi, "Come and be our king." Njoo sasa uwe mfalme wetu. And that is when David eventually now moved to Jerusalem to become king over Israel. Na hapo ndipo hatimaye Daudi alihamia Yerusalemu na kuwa mfalme juu ya Israeli. Why three anointings for David to be a king. Kwa nini ilihitaji upako mara tatu ili Daudi awe mfalme? Do leaders need to be reaffirmed and reassured? Je, viongozi wanahitaji kuthibitishwa tena na tena na kuhakikishwa? Is something that you know God has called you and has given you but you've not really been able to possess and have it? Je, kuna jambo ambalo Mungu amekuitia na hujaweza kulimiliki na kulichukua? How do we get out of here? Na tunaondokaje hapo? It is God's grace. Ni grace God's grace ni neema ya Mungu that is will must come to pass ambayo katika wakati wake lazima itimie so come sun come rain kwa hiyo iwe mvua au jua whenever there is any delay wakati wowote tunapokuwa na kucheleweshwa God is looking through his word Mungu analitazama neno lake to see to it that it happens kuhakikisha kwamba inakuwa hivyo so it is our responsibility kwa hiyo ni wajibu wetu to stand up and see what we are supposed to do kusimama na kuona kile tunachotakiwa kufanya to seek to make to pass what God had promised na kutafuta kutimiza kile ambacho Mungu ameahidi so that God could use his purpose and his will through our lives ili kwamba Mungu atumie kusudi lake na mapenzi yake kwa njia ya maisha yetu the fact that what you had expected has not come a reality ukweli kwamba lile unalotarajia halijatokea kuwa halisi does not mean that you are forgotten haina maana ya kwamba umesahuliwa it does not mean that God has nothing to do with you anymore na haina maana ya kwamba Mungu amekusahau anamekuacha. You can launch another prayer and seek God's grace and it will happen. Waweza kupiga maombi mapya na kutafuta neema hiyo na uhakikishe inatimia. You can stand and oppose the devil and say Wa- hey waweza kusimama na kumpinga shetani kumwambia wewe and he will run away from you naye atakukimbia you can stand and seek god's grace waweza kusimama na kutafuta neema ya Mungu and god will make it possible again na Mungu atafanya iwezekane tena some of us here need yet another anointing baadhi yetu hapa bado tuahitaji upako mwingine because how we started things kwa sababu vile tulivyoanza mambo yetu and what we were seeing in the horizon na tulikuwa tukiona kule mbali As now faded away kwamba yale tunayoyaona yameshafifia and we are getting lost in all those different possibilities na tunaona kwamba tunapotea potea katika uwezekano mbalimbali the word of god says neno la mungu linasema god is faithful mungu ni mwaminifu he who called us yeye aliyetuita and he'll see to it that everything come to pass hata hakikisha kila jambo linatimia now before we pray na kabla ya kuingia katika kuomba i want to quickly highlight nataka kwa haraka sana niseme about the battles with the devil juu ya vita mapambano tuliyonayo dhidi ya shetani remember i said you are a target 
Kumbuka nilisema ya kwamba wewe ndiwe mlengwa. Many people think that whenever they become leaders, mara nyingi watu hudhani kwamba wanapokuwa kiongozi, they are also leaders of the demons and the devil. Wanadhani kwamba nao wamekuwa kiongozi juu ya mapepo na shetani mwenyewe. The devil and demons does not fear any possible positions of leadership. Na shetani na mapepo hawaogopi nafasi yoyote au ngazi yoyote ya cheo cha uongozi. Actually the higher you go in responsibility, the more you are supposed to sink yourself in the superpower ndivyo unavozidi kujitafuta zaidi katika ile nguvu ya juu zaidi if you cannot sink yourself in god kama uwezi kujipata ndani ya mungu mwenyewe you cannot survive there hutaweza kudumu because everybody else there kwa sababu kila mmoja humo as there any other type of power they draw from na kama wana nguvu fulani wanayoipata wanakujua when it comes to the time when people are looking for leaders especially in senior and big positions na inapofika wakati watu wanatafuta viongozi kupandishwa katika vyeo vya juu au ngazi za juu those who don't know god are normally very busy wale wasio mjua mungu mara nyingi wanajishughulisha sana uh, consulting witchcrafts wakienda kwa wachawi and looking for alternative ways wakitafuta njia zingine mbadala so for you who is a born again christian hiyo kwako wewe uliokoka if you don't mount up a gear to sink more in the lord kama utafuti kuzama ndani ya bwana be sure you will be a prey hakika yake yatakushinda we have a battle with the enemy maana tuapambana na adui and we must win these battles lazima tushinde vita hiyo so that eventually we win the ili hatimaye vita yote nzima tuwe tumeishinda whenever you are called into a position of leadership wakati wote unapoitwa kuwa kiongozi you have declared battle with the devil jua ya kwamba umetangaza vita na shetani stand up and seek god hebu simama umtafute mungu train yourself hebu ujifunze brace yourself hebu ujiandae let god train your fingers mruhusu mungu afundishe vidole vyako and let him train your hands na umruhusu aifundishe mikono yako fingers are trained for battles bana vidole and the hand is trained for the all war na mkono kwa ajili ya kushinda vita nzima this morning i want us to pray wewe wakati huu nataka tuombe so if you are in the house wewe ikiwa uko hapa and you want to come to god na wataka kumjia mungu kwa and say father na kumwambia baba it is true ni kweli i was anointed for this nilipokea upako kwa ajili ya hii i felt your conviction for this na nilijisikia wewe ukisema nami but somewhere somehow lakini kwa namna fulani huko i have not reach to the potential that you had for me sijafikia ule uwezo ulionao kwa ajili yako i need your grace again nahitaji neema yako tena as david was anointed yet a second time kama ambavyo daudi alipakwa mafuta kwa mara ya pili and yet a third time bado akapakwa tena mara ya tatu i want you to anoint me another time nataka sasa unipake mafuta tena but before i pray for you lakini kabla sija kuombea i want to pray for those who are here nataka kuombea wale walio hapa and they have not made decision to follow Jesus. Ambao wewe hujakata shauri kumfuata Yesu kwa mwokozi wako. They have not really put themselves in the discipleship and the discipline of the Lord. Hawajajiweka katika kuwa wanafunzi wa Bwana. You want Jesus to touch you. Wataka Yesu akuguse. Because there is no way you'll be anointed a second time. Kwa sababu hakuna jinsi utakavyopakwa mafuta kwa mara ya pili. If you don't have even that very first time. Ikiwa hujawahi kuanza hata ile hatua yako ya kwanza. You are here and you don't know the purpose of God for your life. Uko hapa na uyajui makusudi ya Mungu kwa ajili ya maisha yako. Honestly you don't know where you are going. Bila shaka hujui unakokwenda. If you die today, na ikiwa utakufa leo, you don't know whether you'll be with Jesus or you'll go to hell. Hujui kama utakuwa pamoja na Yesu mbinguni au utakwenda jehanamu. If this life come to an end all of a sudden, ikiwa maisha yako haya yatakatizwa ghafla, you are not sure where you'll spend your eternity. Huna hakika umilele utakuwa wapi. I have good news for you. Nina habari njema juu yako you can make up with god waweza kupatanishwa na mungu he can help you aweza kukusaidia you can be anointed waweza kupakwa mafuta upya he can make you move in his purpose aweza kukufanya utembee katika makusudi yake god has called you to a position of leadership mungu amekuita kwa nafasi ya uongozi right from the family na inatokea katika familia to every place 
place and everything that you do. Na katika kila mahali na kila jambo unalolifanya. But without right relationship with God, ya kwamba pasipo kuwa na uhusiano huo na Mungu, you cannot go anywhere. Hutaweza kusonga mbele. Leadership battles are real. Vita vya ki, uh, vya uongozi ni halisi. And they are so real if you don't have any protection. Na ni halisi sana kama huna ulinzi wowote. The hapa you go na unamozidi kwenda juu and the higher you go na unamozidi kupanda the target you become wewe unazidi kuwa mlengwa it is only jesus will help you ni yesu pekee atakayekusaidia shall we stand hebu tusimame sote I want us to search deep in our hearts. Nataka tupeleleze kwa kina ndani ya mioyo yetu. And consider how the journey has been. Hebu tafakari vile safari ilivyokuwa. Some of you it has been 15 years like David. Baadhi yenu imekuwa sasa miaka 15 kama ilivyo kwa Daudi. Anointed but no office. Umepakwa mafuta lakini hujashika ofisi. Some it is only 5 years. Wengine ni miaka mitano tu. Some maybe one year. Wengine hata mwaka mmoja. Whatever the time it is. Na vyovyote vile iwavyo. God is faithful. Mungu bado ni mwaminifu. He watches his word. Yeye husimamia neno lake. To sit it that it comes to pass. Kuhakikisha kwamba linatimia. We are promised victory over the battles. Tumeahidiwa ushindi katika mapambano. Because the battle belongs to the Lord. Kwa sababu vita ni vya Bwana. God himself has called himself the Lord of hosts. Kwa sababu Mungu mwenyewe amejiita Bwana wa majeshi. He is willing to train our fingers. Yuko tayari kuifunza kuvifunza vidole vyetu and to train our hands na kuifundisha mikono yetu to triumph in the battles ili kushinda katika vita let us worship the lord as we consider our hearts hebu tumwabudu bwana wakati tukitafakari katika mioyo yetu nina haja and to help you na akusaidie and to direct you akuongoze kuongoze and to guide you na kuelekeze and you have never given your life to jesus na wewe hujawahi kumpa yeye yesu maisha yako this afternoon you are saying chana wa leo unasema jesus i need you yesu ninakuhitaji help me unisaidie walk according to your will na nikatembea katika njia yako and take my responsibilities as a leader nikachukue wajukumu yangu kama kiongozi in the manner that is pleasing you what namna inayokupendeza come in front and we'll pray for you chukua hatua uje hapa mbele nasi tutaomba juu yako to pray with
with you who is saying na penda vile niombe kwa ajili yako wewe unayesema that god ya kwamba mungu it all started well na mambo yalianza vizuri but it is going nowhere lakini naona si songi mbele it is taking time inachukua muda sasa the battles has been so rough and so fierce vita imekuwa kali mno i don't see a breakthrough ahead na sioni upenyo mbele i need your hand again na hitaji mkono wako tena i need a second anointing hitaji upako mwingine i need a third anointing I need to move to my rightful position. I need to make this matter come to pass. And you also want us to pray together. Let us meet at the altar. Where we always pray together. Jehovah God is God of battles. Jehovah Mungu ni Mungu wa vita. He is a man of war and God is his name. Yeye ni mtu wa vita na Mungu Bwana ndiye ile jina lake. He is Jehovah Sebaoth. He is Jehovah Sebaoth. Yeye ni Jehovah Sebaoth. He has said he will fight our battles. Amesema yeye atapigana vita yetu. I want you to believe. Nataka uamini. And to tell him. Na useme. Father. Zaidi. It is it is enough. Yatosha. It is over. Ya imekwisha. From today onwards. Tangu leo na kuendelea. This battle is over. Vita hii imekwisha. Train my fingers. Vifundishe vidole vyangu. How to battle and to win jinsi ya kupigana vita na kushinda Turn my hand nafundisha mikono yangu how to win wars jinsi ya kushinda vita i want you to pray with your own words nataka uombe kwa maneno yako mwenyewe and the lord will hear and do na bwana atakusikia na kutenda in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. Baba wa mbinguni kwa jina la Yesu. Father we come before you this morning. Baba tuaje mbele zako wakati huu. You are the Lord of battles. Wewe ni bwana wa vita. You are the great I am. Wewe ni yeye aliyesema mimi ndiko. You are Jehovah who fight our battles. Wewe ni Jehovah upiga naye vita yetu. Father you can stand with us. Ili kwamba uweze kusimama nasi. This afternoon my father. Sana wa leo baba yangu. Your sons and daughters has come to you. Wana wako na binti wamekuja kwako. Like David said Kama Daudi alivyosema You are my shield Wewe ndiwe ngao yangu You are my defender Wewe ndiwe mlinzi wangu You are my butler Wewe ndiwe mchukishaji wangu You are my armor bearer Wewe ndiwe mbeba silaha wangu You are the great at battle Wewe ndiwe mkuu katika vita In the name of Jesus Katika jina la Yesu Every difficulty Kila jambo kubwa Every opposition Kila upinzani Every work of darkness Kila giza That has been against your people Kama ulimekaa kinyume afternoon I break it in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost and the fire of the Holy Ghost I set it ablaze every contrary spirit which is coming against the will of God and against the promises of God in the lives of your children everything which is making the promise not to come I break it in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost I declare victory now I declare grace now I declare victory over the war in the name of Jesus my heavenly father 
extend your hand and touch your people and give them grace, O Lord. Give them favor and lead them, O Lord, in the victory that is assured in you. Even as you remembered David and he was anointed a second time, let this your person be anointed again. Let this your daughter be touched again by your Holy Ghost. Let your Holy Spirit minister to her again and make the way straight for the glory of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let us all give a big clap to the Lord. And say Amen. May God fight your battles. May God fight your battles. May Mungu akupiganie. And win your wars. Na ushinde vita. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. You may go back to your seat. Waweza kurejea kwenye kiti chako. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah.